So now the BM25 model. So up to this beam model, which is the binary independence model, uh, we will be developing basically the BM25 model, uh, which is based on again a probabilistic model, which basically assumes a document will be relevant if the relevance indicator, which is this R, will be the probability. Let me put it in other words: the probability of the document being relevant will be greater than the document. The probability of the document being non-relevant. So this is basically the probabilistic framework that we have started with in the before the BIM model, binary independence model. So here BM25 is basically an extension of the binary independence model. Again, binary feature means document represented by the vector of the of the or the binary vectors indicating the term occurrence, and it assumes that the terms are independent from each other while occurring. These are some assumptions, but we know these are particularly this one is not true. There can be some uh, dependence between two terms being occurred in the same document, for example, Hong Kong that we have discussed earlier or say King Kong or something similar or San Francisco. So the first version in the PM25 model uses a saturation function. Here, this is basically the term weight of the term i in a document. So what we'll be doing is basically, instead of considering a raw term frequency, we will be considering tf by some constant k1 plus tf. It seems a little bit heuristical, Actually, it is. It is a, a bit of a heuristic. Using this heuristics, what we are ending up? Can someone guess? Earlier, the term frequency of the document of a document or term frequency of a term, not 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 actually a document. Term frequency of a term can actually grow from. Theoretically, it can grow from zero to infinity. But using this, you can understand. With, with some uh, dry run, you will be understanding that we will be uh, basically bounding the term frequency from 0 to 1. If we set k1 into 0, which is basically a constant, it will be basically considering the raw term frequency or basically the term frequency by term frequency, it will be uh, very, uh, I mean, it, it, it will be just considering. Uh, <laughs> a binary model that is if the term frequency is 0 it will be 0 if the term frequency is non zero it will be 1 and if it is a large one large value will still be basically bounding them in between 0 to 1 right the second version was an advanced one where we are introducing the idf factor here as well Together with that, in the numerator, we are using again some uh, same, um, I mean, another factor of the same k1 constant. So essentially, this is the IDF factor. And the second part is basically a normalized TF factor or a saturated TF factor. So it is similar to TF IDF, but term scores are now bounded, bounded in 0 to 1. Now, we have discussed that document length normalization are a very important factor. The longer documents are likely to have larger TF value due to two different reasons. One is verbosity. When the same topic is discussed or same terms are being discussed at different part, this is called verbosity. And for larger scope, when there are new terms being occurred for different reasons in the document. That is, it is multi-topical, that is larger scope. For that reason as well, the document length can increase. So a real document will be basically considering mostly both these aspects. So we should be applying some, I mean, some factor of uh, length normalization as we have 
seen earlier earlier we have normalized uh, term frequency using the raw document length or document size which is basically the summation of tf of all the terms in the vocabulary note that in the vocabulary as i said there can be 1 million unique terms but all those 1 million unique terms will not be occurring in the document under consideration so this is essentially similar to i being in d because for all the i's not in d the tf term frequency of the term in the document will be basically zero so it is basically this together with that what we will be doing is we will be using average document length so average document length over the collection we will be using this as a normalizer attribute what we will be doing is we will be basically introducing a new variable say or new component say b as a document length normalization factor which will be defined as 1 minus b plus b into document size by average document length well it seems a very i mean heuristical one i mean without no particular reason a reason i'm just i mean introducing this it is indeed a heuristical one but it it actually works pretty well now if i set b equals to 0 you will be understanding that if i set small b equals to 0 so in that case capital b equals to will be 1 right so this part will be 0 this part will be 0 1 <laughs> sorry and if i set b equals to 1 that means this part will be 1 this part will be cancelling each other so essentially the normalization will be the document length by average document length so earlier what we are doing is tf by only the document length now what we will be doing is basically we will be dividing the term frequency by this b instead of that only the document length putting everything forward here this is basically the the term frequency factor which we have introduced in the approach one and approach two in the bm25 okapi model and uh, here b is basically provided providing uh, no, this so basically this factor so it again i i totally agree with you this seems a little bit heuristical it is indeed a bit heuristical so this part is basically again the idf the second part is basically the tf the normalized tf so in putting together the pn25 ranking function looks like this for a term t the weight of the term in that in a, in a particular document will be this so i'll be going through the individual component in this part is basically this part is basically the term frequency factor and this part is basically the inverse document frequency factor <laughs> Here, the T mod T is basically the document length. Average TL is basically the average document length of all the documents in the collection C. K1 is a constant or a parameter which controls the frequency, frequency scaling. If we set K1 equals to 0, it will be, as I said, it will be just considering binary. That is, if it is not occurring once it will be considering as zero if it is con con uh, occurring at least i mean non zero times it will be considering one and p1 controls the document length normalization factor that we have discussed just now so the score of a document will be basically the summation over all the terms in the intersection of the query and the document and this is the weight uh, 
this value of the cons the, the parameters should be empirically set that is we need to check uh, i mean using different values of k1 and b which whichever is performing the best and then only we can actually set but traditionally it has been seen that setting k1 in, uh, to 1.2 and setting b to 0.75 can give you pretty fair result now dissect let's just dissect the vm25 model the individual component this part is basically indicating that is the summation part that is more words common with the query will be better right more summation will be happening so that's why the score will be increasing this part in blue tf t comma d indicates repetition of the query words is better that is occurrence of the query terms term in the document more and more times will be better but it will be it is actually normalized using this you know, we know that and this part is basically specifying that uh, common words are less important rare words are more important basically this is the idea factor and the parameters are k1 and b basically controls the term frequency of scaling uh, and so k1 is basically the control term frequency scaling and b basically controls the document length frequency a uh, document length normalization and repetition is less important than different query words as we can see this is the summation over the entire summation entire uh, term weights that's it up to today's class i have a small uh, exercise for you guys but i think i am running a uh, sort of time so this is actually intuitively easy i hope i'll be providing this slide to you you will be understanding this on your own so basically why bm25 is better than tfidf model although we are essentially doing something similar to tfidf why uh, it is actually better so this is a small example that you can you will be able to understand on your own